Okay. Um, well, yeah, let, let's do that. Let's have you play like a 10 plus 5 game because that will be the um, sure. the PogChamps time control and uh, Yellow Watcher time management. Um, 10 plus 5 and not 15 plus 5? I'm pretty sure it's 10. Let me check the... Uh, think, oh, one sec. I ordered sushi. I oh, yeah, go for it. I have acquired sushi. Nice, nice. Congratulations. And this is a fantastic moment to be alive. Be cool to... Uh, have you play someone from from the dojo? We have a very very helpful community. In fact, if you ever need like training partners, I can definitely um, hook you up. All right, I've muted myself. Let's see how fun the so plus is. five does that? Oh, it does increase just regardless. Okay. Oh, it says ten. Oh one, that's epic. Oh god. Um, London Systems yeah, Classic. I think I'll just still do this. Yeah, sorry, Boondock. I don't know why it wasn't working. Hmm. Yeah, now one thing we'll have to talk about is uh, the placing of this nine on C6 because I don't don't really love developing with this one. Okay so yeah, we'll that. we'll talk about this. No, I'll do this first. Yeah, <laughs> man, London, no super popular opening. And I don't think he's playing it just because he's from the UK. It's one of the biggest openings. Now E6 is totally fine here. And actually, I mean, I don't think I don't think white is gonna get such a huge edge as long as black just develops like to the center, like knight of six, bishop e seven, bishop d6. But yeah, I would definitely mention how this knight can be more useful if the C pawn is out in front of it. Hey, Bruman, welcome to the channel. All right, E3. So white continues typical London style. Okay, I like that bishop d6 came quickly because shows... See, and now I thinking. don't take. That I know. I don't take that because then you open up the h file for him. Very good. So let us not do that. I also don't like rook on, uh, uh, knight on f6. I prefer e7, I think. Hmm. Because if knight... F6, he is knight E5. Oh, I see. He and I'm not happy like with one. that. I prefer this. Okay. I'm fine with knight that. Knight E5 doesn't, doesn't make me smile. Knight E7 is uh, still developing towards the center. Yeah, E6 is okay. okay. This bishop knight is often... Knight take. You know, it's defended by the bishop. A problem, but it can get And if developed. I don't take, it's a, nice, it's a nice little spot. And now I have F6 if he goes there. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I like I C4 bishop from takes. white. If I take, bishop takes. If he takes, I take. Then my bishop is free. I'll probably let him take that. I'm not against that, I think. But if he pushes further, we're going to C5. And that's also annoying. Ooh. Well, c5 is not a huge threat. I mean, I then might he's, end up just taking that. He's forced to take on g3, but that's not not the end of the world. I feel like I'll take that because it's an annoying spot if he pushes it further. Oh, except I have this. Maybe. I like b6. So yeah, you can tell he's he's a good player. He's like thinking about his moves. He's not just like reacting super fast. There's the time. Sorry, I didn't realize it was getting blocked. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's right, Ringo. Yeah. Um, King of Spikes, not too often. We're that's the one uh, thing I didn't pretty like, busy, but probably just take. occasionally. Takes on c4. Aha, so he was worried about white pushing c5, feels like. So he takes. Which, honestly, mm. fine, as long as we develop the bishop to b7. I'm totally cool with black's opening here. Okay. I think I'll just castle. I don't see a massive threat. I think. I think this is okay. It's just that my bishop on c8 is doing almost nothing. We put him on b7, and then move my knight out of the way. Nice. Where would I put my knight? A5. Uh, I'm not against that. That's not that bad. Just on a5, it doesn't do much. It Well, it allows the bishop to see stuff. I'm not against that. I feel like I'll go for that. So bishop b7, the knight a5. Okay, big moment. Doesn't really attack anything massively. Now I can just make an escape square, right? He might go on to e4. Which is a bit annoying. Do I prevent him to go there? I don't know how to prevent that. I think he's missing Ooh, it. Wait, I can do... I don't know exactly what to do there. It'll go to e4, but I don't know what to do against that. Well, it's good that he blunders it I'm here. Just focus on my other plan and now. not in pug champs, because it's not like he's annoying there. I can do this first. I think. Yeah. It's gonna. Oh, it's gonna stay. Yeah, I didn't. I just now saw it. I just saw it. No! <laughs> I'm sorry, man. As I did the move, as I did the move, I saw it. Oh, man, classic experience. It happens. Yeah, it should take more time. Um, no, look, you, you spent time on that move. You just didn't see the threat. You spent a mm. full minute there. It, no, it, it's going to happen. And better that it happens here and not in Pog Champs. So you can kind of... That's true. That is very, very true. Kind of learn from it. But honestly, a lot of, um, a lot of instructive there, uh, stuff there already. So plenty to talk about. Let okay. me... Um, yeah, you go ahead and eat. Let me it's let me put this into a, into a bar. <laughs> it happens. It happens. It's one one of the devious things about this queen on c2. It's like, yeah, yeah. angling from a distance. Um, yeah, let me copy this game. Also a good chance to talk about the London system, which I imagine we're going to be seeing. Yeah, I don't know any names whatsoever. Oh, the London is when they oh, put London. the bishop on uh, f4. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Very, very uh, common nowadays. I've heard of it. I just don't know exactly what it is. Mm. It is with one pawn and then a bishop in the middle that I know. Not much more. It, I just know it because, because um, I believe Andrea plays it a lot. Yeah, that I think that's right. I think she does. Yeah, it's actually a very common opening... At, throughout all levels, just because it's like very solid and very straightforward for white, mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a, it's almost like a training wheels opening because it's very hard for white to get wrong. You just put your pieces in the center, right, and then um, everything gets developed. White gets castled. Everything is is solid. So I'm back on the analysis board. I don't know if you're uh, here as well. You might have to switch uh, chess.com tabs. Okay. Um, so, yep. okay, actually, first thing we should talk about is this move, knight c6. So, okay. this knight uh, is not always happy here, especially in d4 openings. 
because when white plays like e3 and then in a lot of cases uh, c3, the knight just feels very restricted because it's hitting a pawn that's defended by other pawns mm. and it doesn't have a lot of room uh, to go. Right. So in many cases, this knight feels a lot happier if it's behind the c pawn. So for example, something like this. Um, because then your pawn is kind of putting pressure first, like you're attacking with your uh, lesser value pieces, and then the knight can put pressure behind that. So what's the best move if they just take? Now, if they take here, there's uh, different options that I want you to uh, consider. One move to keep in mind is that you, in many cases, have uh, queen a5 check if you really want to just win back your pawn. So you can right. do this one. But the big move I would consider is um, e5. Because you not only take the center, you also take it with tempo, meaning like, okay, white has to move the bishop and you kind of get a free move. And then you open up your bishop to recapture this right. pawn. Right, that's good. I like that. Yeah. So you're just, you're getting everything in this opening. In fact, I think here it would be um, kind of a mistake for white to, to take on c5. Because you get this very nice move in. Let's say bishop g3, you take here, and then you can just develop your pieces to the center and yeah. everything is, is super solid. Um, so this is one idea. I, I want to show you another setup that I think could be pretty useful. Let's say you just play this move knight f6. Um, say white just continues in the same way. You play bishop d6, let's say bishop g3. Um, you mentioned you you don't like taking here because it opens the h-file. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, let's say we castle instead. White plays, usually they go like bishop d3 here or bishop b2. Um, this is the other kind of benefit of leaving your knight on b8, is that in this kind of position, you mentioned you had an issue with the light squared bishop. You can develop it similar to how you did in the game, except here the idea would be to play bishop a6. And it's very important that your knight is defending this mm -hmm. square. Um, so yep. this is the kind of the nice thing about keeping your knight on b8 is that you can play bishop a6. And the reason we want to trade off these bishops, as you might imagine, is your bishop is kind of blocked in by your pawns. White's bishop is sitting on a very nice diagonal. Yeah. Yep. And so it's definitely in uh, black's best interest to trade it off. So something like this, bishop a6, and then white can choose either they trade and we're happy, or they avoid the trade, but then it's hard for white to castle. And uh, then I would continue c5 here, bring the knight out behind the pawn, and um, basically everything gets developed. Uh, our pieces are fighting for this key e5 square, which is very important. Your queen can come to c7 next, and one day you might even be able to push uh, e5 and just kind of take over the center. Um, now, quick uh, idea here, just to make sure we don't blunder this, because it happens a lot. Some players, they like to play this plan b6 early, and then we have to be very careful that we don't do this before castling. So this is kind of a puzzle rush moment. Maybe you can see the problem with this one um, from Black's point of view. Like, how does how yeah. does white win here? Yeah, Yeah, white can put you in... Well, white can take it mm -hmm. um, with their bishop. And then after you take with knight, they can put you in check with queen on a4 and then win the knight because the knight can't defend it. Exactly, yeah. So this think, has been um, blundered. Like, I think you can, mm -hmm. can you already put them in check? Like, do you have to start with taking it? Yeah, it's a very good question. What happens if white just does this one first? Oh, because you, you, have, you have queen to d7. Right. And right. black, black is just yeah, in you're time. Not, you're not up anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, if they take first, then yeah, black just loses a piece. And this has yeah. happened many times. I would say probably thousands, <laughs> thousands upon thousands. Um, so see that that's one of the biggest things. I think mm -hmm. I would have missed it if you didn't point out that there was something, right? Yeah. No, that's a very you, good point. That. Um. I think that's the main thing with puzzles as well. Like, well, with puzzles, you can be very good because you know that it's a scenario where you can be up. 
whilst in an actual game, that isn't always there for the taking, right? You don't always have someone telling you, at this point, it could be a puzzle and there's some good move, right? Right. No, you're, you're absolutely right. So my thing on this is, um, well, you, you do a lot of puzzles already. So what this does is this strengthens your pattern recognition. And so right. if the opponent does hang something and it might feel like a puzzle you've seen before, your brain is kind of more likely to, to notice it. But there's this famous saying in chess, tactics are all about observation, like mm -hmm. noticing something's weak, something's hanging, we have a check available, yeah. and then your brain kind of works it out uh, from there. Right. Um, what I would suggest trying to do uh, for the future, and, and this is difficult, especially in rapid because you don't have a lot of time, is to do like a quick blunder check, basically whenever the opponent does anything. You kind of like pretend psychologically that it's a puzzle and you tell yourself, okay, if there was a tactic here, then what, what might my move be? Yeah. Um, and intuitively, you'll start to pick up when a move is kind of loose and weakening and might be hanging something and when it's pretty solid. Like here, okay, white plays this move C3. It's very unlikely that this could possibly hang something. So you don't really have to spend a ton of time looking for some winning tactic. Intuitively, we kind of feel like, okay, there's probably nothing there. Um, right. But if white makes some, let's say, very uh, loose move, like they advance a piece super aggressively, like let's say knight to g5, and you notice, hmm, this knight's unprotected, then this would be a moment where I stop and check and see if I have any any tactics and see like, okay, can I attack this knight somehow? Can I take advantage? And if not, then you move on. But if, if yes, then at least you have some chance of, of spotting the trick. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, very, very important skill to kind of develop is like spotting the opponent's blunders and then vice versa, preventing yourself from blundering is kind of doing the reverse of this. So let's say, for example, you have this position and you're considering the move bishop a6. What a lot of players do is they do like a blunder check. They're like, okay, if I play this move, does white have any tactics? Exactly like I asked you. And I didn't really give you any hints. I didn't say like, oh, look for checks or look for captures or anything like that. I just said, does white have something here? And you found it. This yep. is, you can prompt yourself like this during the game. You can be like, oh, is, is this hanging anything? Are there any checks, any forcing moves I have to uh, consider? And right. that will often help you avoid uh, blunders. It's not... 100% foolproof, of course, everyone blunders, but it can, it can certainly help a little bit. Um, okay. All right, now going to the actual game, I thought, um, I thought you actually played everything very reasonably, uh, including taking and, and castling here. Um, and then of course, knight g5, yeah, we didn't fully appreciate the opponent's threats. Yeah, if I, if I would have seen it, probably g6 would have been the move. That I did, or that I would have done. Mm -hmm. I think g6 is fine. Um, we can also cover with the knight, let's say, like maybe knight g6 or, whoops, knight f5 also possible. If a knight, if a knight would move like that, no, no, it was just... <laughs> That would still not be great. <laughs> it would not be good, but... <laughs> but that would be pretty funny. Um, and yeah, and then g6, you're fine. I, it sounded like... You figured your opponent's intention was to bring the knight back here. Yeah, that, that's the only thing I saw. Gotcha. Well, I didn't see the, the queen to h7. It's good that you're looking at what the opponent is trying to do. Like, that's, that's very important. I would say that's mm. absolutely critical. Uh, now, we don't always see the threats, but the first step is, of course, to look. And then as you get more and more experience, now, like... I mean, it takes losing a lot of games for the patterns to really get burned in. But yeah, once we get mated like this a couple times, uh, eventually things start to uh, start uh, It to was stick. one. It was one. Come on. It was a one time. It was a one time. <laughs> one time. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'll play another one. And I won't, it won't happen again. It won't happen again. I promise. It's fine if it does. The important thing is like, it's not the end of the world. You can always, mm -hmm. you can always learn from it. Um. Okay, any, any questions on this game? No, it ended rather soon, so there's not much to cover other than the, the Nile to B or a C6 um, that we talked about. I think, I think yeah, I'll, I'll just try and play another game 
and hopefully get further than, what is it, move eight? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's have you play another one. Um, let me find you another opponent. Coco, let me know if your friend is down to play uh, a second game with black. We'll, we'll flip the colors. Um, is there a difference between a loose piece and a hanging piece? Yeah, um, a hanging piece is one that's like, uh, let's say, immediately under attack. Like if black were to play knight b4 here, then this queen on c2 would be hanging. And then a loose piece is a piece that, let's say, is undefended, but um, we're not exactly attacking yet. So like this knight on g5 is not defended, but... It's not exactly um, immediately under attack. Although a lot of people, they use right. the terms interchangeably. Um, but you could say the knight is potentially hanging. Mm -hmm. 